What is up guys, Charlie Pangus here. Welcome to Merch Design episode 11. This one was based on your guys' feedback, okay? So what I did is in my community tab, I posted a random design that I recently did and I said if I get 500 likes on it, I will make a tutorial on it and you guys over delivered. So we are making that tutorial today. Before we get into the video though, I wanted to let you guys know that I did start a YouTube gaming channel for fun that I'm going to be streaming on every single week. I play a lot of games like Warzone on there, so if you guys wanna support my hobby for fun, go ahead and uh, go to the description below and you guys can subscribe. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into Merch Design Episode 11, pull up Photoshop, and let's get started. Every single design you guys see on Instagram or online in general has a process, right? Everything can be broken down into simple steps, simple shapes, simple photos, right? And this one is no different. This one is basically a bunch of photos that were combined together with some uh, different font elements, type elements, to uh, make this design. It's a really simple one. So um, what you have to do is break it down in your head before getting into it, right? Because if you just get into it without planning it, it's going to be a lot more difficult for you to come up with a concept. For this one, I kind of had a plan. I knew that I wanted to take a rose and cut the rose out and put a heart there instead. That was my basic plan and I executed it. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So the first thing I did was I used the lasso tool to actually cut out the hand out of the background. So I'm left with something that looks like this. So I actually ended up cutting the rose and the hand out. And the cleaner this is done, the better your outcome is going to be. So if you take a lot of time cutting out the image, the object that you wanna use in your design, it's just going to be that much better at the end. So take your time, do not rush it. I promise you, you're gonna have really good results at the end. Again, all I did was use a polygonal lasso tool. You can hit L on your keyboard to go to it. That's a little shortcut for you. And I actually did record the process. So I'm gonna show you that real quick before we get into the other design elements. As soon as I cut up the hand and the rose, I'm left with just the hand. So let me go and hide the design here and let's start over. So I have the hand here. What I wanna do is just drag that into my uh, document that I created. This is a 14 inch by 18 inch document. Really uh, just a basic document size. I use it all the time. And once I imported it into my new document, I just resized it to kind of figure out the positioning and overall dimensions that I wanna go with for this design. Word of advice is make sure you're designing for the shirt color, don't design opposite. Don't design first and then you're like, wait a minute, I was supposed to design for a black shirt and now my design doesn't look good. Don't do that. Figure out the shirt colors you wanna design for and then design for those shirt colors. So if you're designing for an orange shirt, lighter colors might not look as good, right? Darker colors will look better, which is why this Slamerican uh, text is black instead of white, for instance. White would work, but it wouldn't look as good as black. I hope that makes sense. So anyway, I have my hand now and the hand is cut out. We're good to go there. We don't need to do anything else there. I can just kind of make sure it's centered. That's about all you need to do. Actually, I'm gonna convert this to a smart object just like that. So all I did was right clicked on it and then uh, convert to smart object. Now what I need to do is go get my heart. So this one is actually already cut out for me. So I'm just gonna drag that in place and then rotate it. Command T on your keyboard to rotate. This is also a different heart, which is okay. I wanted to change it up just a little bit for this tutorial. Basically, I found a real life image of a heart and I cut the background out. Simple as that. You can use a lasso tool for that as well. Next thing I wanna do is actually desaturate everything. So I'm gonna take everything and just desaturate it completely. And there's a reason why I'm doing this. I wanna see the light difference, right? I wanna see if things match up. So for example, this heart looks a little brighter than everything else. So I'm gonna to go to levels and just kind of try to fix that real quick. I just want everything to look like it matches. So I think that looks pretty good. We added some more contrast with the levels. So now we have a heart and a half hand. That's what I titled it at least. So now we're good to go there. Now that this heart is black and white, I'm gonna convert it to a smart object again. I'm gonna go up to image adjustments and we're going to add a gradient map to it. The next thing I wanna do is add a gradient map above the actual heart and change the color of it. So we're gonna do that real quick. I'm just gonna go down here, add a gradient map and I wanna make sure it's a red gradient map and we also wanna reverse that, okay? So it's gonna look something like this, and then we could go from normal to soft light, just like that. So as you can see, it's only affecting the heart, and we can also force this 
within the heart by adding a clipping mask. And these are all things that I do in every tutorial. So you should be familiar with this kind of process, but if not, don't worry, take your time. So I'm gonna kind of just adjust the gradient just a little bit. I think this looks pretty good. I actually like the color of that. I think it looks really, really cool. It's really poppy. The next thing I wanna do is add another gradient map above the hand, make sure it's reversed. And then for this one, I wanna kind of focus on the skin tones, right? So I'm gonna go to oranges and just kind of figure out what would be a good skin tone. Change the blend mode to soft light again, just like that. And as you can see, it's affecting the heart. We just need to add that clipping mask to the hand. It's also affecting the leaves and stuff like that. And we don't want that, but we're gonna mask that out. So um, now what I wanna do is just kind of figure out what color I want this to be. So I'm gonna go through these colors real quick, kind of figure it out. I'm not really a big fan of any of these, if I'm being honest with you. I guess that one actually doesn't look too bad. Um, it's affecting the shadows a little too much, but it's fine. I'm gonna change the fill a little bit. All right, so that looks good. So now what I wanna do is invert this mask on here, go to a soft brush. I'm just going to a soft round brush and I'm just gonna paint over this, right? And add this back. Once you're done filling in the hand, you could do the same thing for the rose, but I think we might be able to trick this a little bit. So what I wanna do is actually duplicate that mask. So I'm just gonna do Command uh, J to duplicate, and you can also right click and duplicate the layer if you wanted to. Um, and then I'm gonna add another clipping mask, but this time I'm gonna invert the mask and see if that does anything. So it looks like it did. Now let's go ahead and go to a green color. Go back to the gradients and go to a green color, any green color you want. And as you can see, we have the leaf selected now, and we can also see kind of the imperfections too. So from here, we just wanna kind of adjust the mask a little bit. And just remember, anytime you're using a layer mask, black deletes, white adds, okay? Or black deletes, white reveals. However they say it, you know what I'm saying. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's the same shit. So anyway, now we have the greens, right? So as you can see, we have this like look going on already. And you can always change the colors by just uh, double clicking on the gradient that you see next to the color and just adjust it however you want. Like if you don't like it, just keep messing with it. And then we can add a little oval at the bottom here. And watch how easy this is, guys. Let's add a little oval at the bottom here. Just like that. And we're gonna create this illusion that it's kind of being cut. What you wanna make sure you do is make sure the oval is touching the left and right side of the wrist. And then we can add a layer mask to the hand plus heart, which I misspelled. Fix that real quick. Anyway, um, so you wanna add a layer mask. Once you add that layer mask, remember black delete. So we're just going to delete the bottom right here. And it's gonna look something like this, but what we need to do is uh, change the color of the oval, and I could just do that by adding a color overlay, and we just wanna pick a color that looks believable. So I'm taking the hand color here and just finding the darker part. So you kinda of wanna find the darkest part, something like that, and that looks pretty good. Uh, from here we can rasterize this layer. I wanna add one more layer above that, make a clipping mask, so this is gonna be oval, okay? And then this clipping mask is gonna be texture. We're already on a soft brush, so now I wanna to go to blend mode and use dissolve. Once you change the blend mode to dissolve, it's going to make that soft brush look very uh, grungy. It's gonna give it texture, right? It's gonna look very gritty. That's the best way to describe it, I think. And uh, from here, we wanna check. And then from there, you just wanna select your white foreground color and color pick that color of the oval and just make it slightly darker, okay? And then watch this. We're gonna go here and just kinda lightly, very lightly, just kinda add some more texture to it, just like that. See what I'm saying? And you can kind of figure out how you sh it should look, but from here I just changed the fill a little bit, and now we're left with something like this. And then again, you can mess with the colors all day long to kind of fine tune them and kind of find the colors that you like. This is different than my original, but this is how I do it, right? And from there, what we could do is group everything again, and then type in hand plus um, heart, and then edit or whatever. So we know that we edited that, right? So now we have that in a group and I'm gonna start typing out some text. So I'm gonna hit T on my keyboard. So I wanna hit T on my keyboard and type in world piece space is due. And I can't see it because it's a darker color. So I just wanna change that to a color that's on my design. So I'm gonna choose that green color, just like that. And then I wanna put a period at the end of world piece is due. And then I can just resize it, really simple. And then I'm gonna add some more text at the bottom and just kind of type something random in. So speak out now. The font that I'm using is called SS Nixon 8. 
and it comes in different variations. I actually purchased this font. You could purchase any fonts you want or find free ones online, but this is the one I really like. So I'm gonna basically use a different variation. So I'm using eight and six from this uh, collection here. Um, and then we wanna change the color of this one to maybe the red color. So I grouped everything together real quick and now I wanna create a circle element up top here. So it's gonna sit right about here, just like that. And then I'm gonna hit T on my keyboard and start typing out some text. So end violence. And then I wanna to go to SS Nixon 8 for this one and then make it much bigger. That looks pretty centered to me. I'm gonna duplicate end violence and actually send it to the bottom. So I'm gonna to go to my direct selection tool here or my path selection tool. You can hit A on your keyboard to go to that. And I wanna to go to the top until I see a left and right arrow with an eye in the center and I just wanna drag down. And you're not gonna be able to see it but if you actually click on it and change the baseline shift, you'll be able to see it again. Maybe make everything bigger. I don't even know, I feel like it's too small. So let's go like 67 for that. And for the earth that I had in the center, I just typed an earth vector on Google and I just found a random one. You can literally find whatever one you want, it doesn't matter. This one actually looks pretty cool and I'm actually not allowed to use this but I'm just gonna use it for demonstration purposes. But it's really important that you create your own elements or buy them so you have rights to use them. I can't stress that enough. But anyway, I'm just gonna use this one for now just to show you guys. So I imported it by copying and pasting it into Photoshop. Turn off contiguous, however you say that. Delete that, and then just select the planet. Command X, delete that, bam, invert that, and you are cooking. And then I'm just kind of dragging that into place now. And then we want to change the color, obviously, so I'm going to choose, let's say, this red color again. Actually, that green color for the planet would be kind of cool. You know? Go green, right? Now what I'm gonna do is add the final touches just by adjusting certain things. And I do think the heart needs to be resized, so I'm just gonna quickly do that. I went and found a plastic texture. So I typed in plastic wrap texture on Google and just found any one I liked. This one works, copied that. And then I went back to Photoshop and pasted that texture in place, resized it a bunch rotated it, and then changed the blend mode to screen. And then what I did is I added a layer mask, inverted it, and just added back some of that. That's basically it, so the texture's in place. And again, this is different than the original, but I came up with this on the spot. I didn't pre-plan this video. I just wanted to show you guys the process, and this is the process, and it takes time. This is a more advanced tutorial, and some of you have been asking me for more advanced tutorials. So my advice is if you don't know shortcuts and you don't understand Photoshop, really learn the basics before you get into the nitty gritty of designing. It's a really complicated thing, guys, and it takes time. But that is how I made this design. You guys wanted it, here it is. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And again, if you guys wanna check out my gaming channel, I will link that in the description below. It's a new hobby of mine, I'm trying it out. I hope you guys support it. Oh, and I forgot to mention, if you guys want wholesale blanks, check out Bella Canvas in the description below. They have amazing styles, amazing color selections. Basically anything you want wholesale or retail, they have it, link in the description below. Guys, that is it for this one. Keep creating, keep being awesome. I'll catch you guys later.